what's happening people. Um, I've already mentioned it in the vlog that I think I've just uploaded. I don't know because I haven't uploaded it yet but it might be up before this video so yeah I did mention it in the vlog but however it was requested by quite a few viewers of my Top Gear review that I, I watch Extra Gear. Now I didn't have time to watch Extra Gear the night I watched Top Gear so I just watched it. I took a bunch of notes in the true review style that seems to be well they look really dirty. Ooh. Um, yeah, so I took a bunch of notes while I was watching it. I was quite surprised when I saw how short the show was, only 23 minutes, but I feel that they packed a lot into that show. But it kind of goes to my, it kind of relates to my first point. Um, and my first point that I took was the conversations seemed to cut each other off. Now, this is more or less during the conversations between Rory and Chris Harris, and then I think it was Chris Harris and Chris Evans. It seems that conversations were only like a line each and it was kind of cutting each other off so I'm not sure what was going on there whether there was time constraints because the studio needed to be used for something else or they had to try and fit it in to get into a time gap on the channel I'm not entirely sure what that was but it did seem that the conversations weren't very smooth they weren't very fluid um, but other than that I felt that the performance in the studio was pretty good now it obviously comes back to the studio a few times and as do my points because I kind of took the points as I was watching so the next point I put and I've put Olin's dampers with the love heart face the emoji and double wishbone suspension now what this was basically I wrote this down quickly but what it was meaning was if you compare Chris Harris's review of the Atom Nomad uh, Aerial Nomad and the Dodge Viper from Chris Evans there's a lot more detail in Chris Harris' uh, reviews and it seems that Chris Harris is a lot more experienced in driving these cars and you could tell it really is him whereas personally I think Chris Evans had a stuntman driving the Viper. Uh, I've put down here plain facts and figures from experienced driver with no bullshit. Um, I don't know why I put with no bullshit. Um, but yeah, it was plain facts and figures. 300 horsepower, X amount of torque double wishbone suspension, it was it was hitting you, the constant information and I feel that that should have been in the main Top Gear show because like obviously a lot of people watch Top Gear not for the cars but for the sheer entertainment of which is now gone uh, in my opinion. It may come back in the future episodes, I will watch occasionally to see what happens there but I feel that this review of the Aerial Nomad was so good it should have been in the main show and Chris Evans thing with the Viper should have if it had to be in a show it should have just been put in the extra gear to be honest. Um, I like the fact it was hitting me with figures and it's it's very much in the style of uh, the way Clarkson delivers the figures. 300 horsepower, blah blah blah, blah blah blah, blah blah blah. And you're like, fuck, I now know everything about this car. And that's, that, I'm one of these viewers that doesn't just watch it for the entertainment, I also watch it for the facts and figures simply because I like to watch, I don't like to read. Um, so if they never did a review of it, I probably know nothing about the Aerial Nomad other than the fact that it exists. But yeah, I like the fact that they hit me with the figures and kept it entertaining. Um, then Chris Harris goes on to say things like it's like a supercar on stilts, uh, which is a very good analogy. It basically is. It has the same. It's lightweight, like a supercar. Well, proper supercar, not these glorified Audis and things like that. But it's lightweight and it's got. Plenty of technology, but nothing more than what it needs, and it's got double wishbone suspension, which was derived from race cars. It's practically what they've been using for a very, very long time in certain types of race cars. It's telling you things like it's got short gear ratios. It says that driving the car isn't so much a workout, but more an assault on the senses. Now, these are kind of things that they should be putting in reviews in the main Top Gear. This is properly entertaining and informative which is what Top Gear should be in the first place. If they did that with Top Gear they wouldn't need extra gear. Um, I've also wrote in here Chris Harris should do the car reviews instead of Chris Evans. How many people agree with that? Leave it in the comments below or send me a message um, or give it a like. If you agree that Chris Harris should do the car reviews instead of Chris, e Chris Evans hit that like button and tell me that you hit the like button in the comments or something like that. Um, because I think a lot of people are definitely going to agree with that. Chris Harris was an excellent person to do those reviews. Now obviously he's done loads of them before and he is an experienced driver. He knows what he's talking about whereas Chris Evans just isn't. He's not. He's a car collector and he never drives them or anything like that. Moved on to Rory's bit uh, and it says it's given me facts about the, how they designed the track. The fact that they 
um, I didn't catch his name, but they got a motocross racer to design some of the track and direct all the construction workers and things like that. It tells you the equipment they used, where they said they used, I think it was a 10 ton um, excavator and two 5 ton excavators. They said they had a massive earth tipper and a 1 ton roller. I want to know stuff like that. A lot of people that watch Top Gear like the information overload. Simply because, like me, they prefer to watch rather than to read. And to hit us with all that kind of stuff, like they never told us this kind of thing about the original Top Gear track back with older Top Gear, other than it was designed by Lotus, uh, who then obviously went on to design the chassis for the Nissan GTR. But I like the fact that they're hitting us with this information. I just wish they put this in the original show. Um, then Rory goes on, he shows us the car, he shows us things that have been done to the car, he explains the effects of the ch changes in terrain and what effect that has on the traction, the way the weight and the car reacts due to different types of braking, because obviously you can brake as hard as you want on the tarmac pretty much, but when it gets to the gravel you can't brake so hard because the car doesn't have ABS, it will just lock up and shoot ahead, it tells you these kind of things, it tells you that even though once you get onto the tarmac off the gravel, you can't be too aggressive because you still have shit in the tyres basically and it will start to wheel spin and things like that. It explains all these kind of things, um, which I love, which I've already said about what, a million times. Um, it then gets on to the interview with uh, Rory, Chris Harris and the comedian Chris Ramsey from Britain. Um, I've put, interview with Chris Ramsey was brilliantly entertaining. It was. Uh, I didn't quite get the Lego thing, that wasn't as funny. I don't. I feel they were aiming for that to be funnier than it actually was, but, you know, I mean, there was a lot less fuck-ups in this than there was in the original, in the actual Top Gear show, so I feel they did very well, and given the fact that they took somebody who wasn't particularly into cars and still got him to talk about cars, it seemed to work better with Chris Ramsey than it did with uh, Eisenberg, whatever he's in it, Jesse Eisenberg. Um, I feel like he just wasn't playing ball at all, um, so he tried to use comedy instead to try and counter for his compensate. So to try and compensate for his lack of knowledge about cars, Chris Ramsey was just willing to play ball and have a laugh. Um, I've put after the interview with Chris Ramsey, which I thought was brilliant, the Lego thing. I just um, news on car makers, ex uh, and I've put for example the Alfa uh, Alfa Romeo Giulia. Now this, there is an upside and a downside to this, I like the fact that they've done the news because it seemed that Top Gear, the actual Top Gear show with Chris Evans didn't seem to bother with any of that kind of stuff, they were too busy trying to throw gags at us and digs at the original cast and all this other kind of shit, so they didn't do the news, which is one of my favourite bits of the show, I like the road trips and everything and I like the star and the reason for the price car, but I like the news, because again I don't like to read, I like to watch and without the news I don't really know much about cars, it's like I rely on that news and YouTube videos and things like that and I feel that that should have been put in the original Top Gear show, they should have just used those two uh, presenters and stuck that in the uh, original Top Gear show and got rid of something else. Um, but they fed you a load of information about that, the fact that um, those special, I think it's like special forces, special operations, Julia, is going to be capable of 190 mile an hour and X amount of horsepower. I like that information again. Um, then they moved on to things like the G Wiz replacement uh, called the E2O. Uh, I'm guessing that's a play on H2O, but instead of hydrogen, you've got electric. Um, and while one of them was trying to big it up and say that maybe this is the way we're going, Chris Harris then goes, Yeah, but Tesla makes something that does 100 miles an hour in five seconds. So we don't need shit like this when we can have a good car. And Tesla are actually getting really popular in my area. There's a good I'd say there's about eight or nine of them kicking around, and yet you go back three, four years, and they weren't even present in the UK um, to anyone's no, uh, to anyone's real knowledge. But while they did give us this information about this G was replacement E two O, they also said, "Look, you can have it if you want, but there are better things out there. There's the Tesla, which fucking trounces anything. If you search up Tesla on YouTube, you'll see it trounces things like four five eights, four eight eights, McLaren twelve Cs." Uh, I believe it even raced a motorbike and kept up because of the sheer amount of torque in that car. Um, and then they moved on to what a university designed as the perfect car for a British person after they asked 2,000 people about their favourite looking parts on cars. So it seemed that it had a DB9 grille and I think there were mini headlights. 
I think, I'm not entirely sure, but they started playing a game with it, trying to test each other's knowledge, and I thought that was quite interesting. I know the original cast of Top Gear did this when they were zooming right into pictures of cars and what is that door handle from, and I think it was... What was the door handle from? I believe it was from Vetra or something like that. I can't remember. It was quite a long time ago. I know they stole that from the original cast, but it was entertaining. It was cool to see that. It was cool to see Rory get tested on what he knows about cars. Um, the next bit I have noticed, um, Rory is a very confident presenter. It seemed that there's confidence and there's overconfidence in just being up your own ass, which is Chris Evans. But Rory's very confident, he's very fluid in what he delivers, and he delivers everything, he delivers all the information very well. Uh, he's also very thorough in his delivery. And I feel that Rory should have been put in the main cast for the main show and taking Chris Evans out, and also put Chris Harris in that main cast as well. Um, and then they could have had four presenters in that show, there would be no need for extra gear. Um, and there'd be no Chris Evans, which I think everyone wants at the moment. The camera cut off again. Um, so yeah, what I was saying is the show is loaded with information. It's like, this car's got this amount of power and this much torque and it'll do this kind of speed and this car's got a really short ratio of box and it's got Olin's dampers and double wishbone suspension and... Fucking slow down a minute, wow! Like, this stuff should be in the main show. I don't know why it wasn't in the main show. It seems that Top Gear is for... The main show is for people that aren't actually car enthusiasts and just want something to watch and it seems extra gear is where it's at for us car enthusiasts it seems to be a much more rounded show I mean I learned more about cars in that 23 minutes than I did in the 63 minutes of the actual show itself um, and then I put the last bit it was for years and years and years since the I believe the episode when Jeremy took the Jagger and the Nürburgring Sabine Schmidt has had a few appearances in Top Gear she did the Britain versus Germany thing she did the, took the transit around the Nürburgring, she obviously trained Jeremy on how to take the Jagger around the uh, Nürburgring as well, and it was always rumours here and there she was going to present Top Gear, and then obviously what happened to the cast, it then became pretty much definite she was going to um, host a show, but no one actually knew anything about her. I mean, I follow a lot of people on YouTube and a lot of news about the Nürburgring, I had no idea she was actually part of a racing team, I didn't know that, and I watch a lot of stuff. Um, so no one knew that, and no one knew that she had this kind of dream to live in a saloon, like a US style saloon, like a proper cowboy kind of thing. Um, so they show us that kind of stuff, and now we all know about what Sabine Schmidt has done with her life. She's won like 60 races, I think they said, and the day of filming that uh, interview in Germany, it was her 20th anniversary from her first racing win in the BMW. And it even, come to, it even went back to clips like that, and Christ, even Sabine didn't know it was her 20th anniversary. But now everyone knows about her, which I feel is brilliant because everyone knows that Chris Evans is terrible on the radio and replaced, you know, I think he replaced Terry Wogan, I think. I'm not entirely sure, I don't know my radio stuff. But we all know about Chris Evans and we all know about Matt LeBlanc and a lot of us know about Chris Harris. Rory, eh, not so much, but Sabine Schmidt, everyone wanted to know about her and no one did until now really, unless she had like a really big following, which I don't know if she did or not to be honest, but I'm glad they did that. It was a random thing and it was, it seemed that after that they kind of cut the show off just there and then, but it did seem like it was something they realised that everyone wanted to see and now they've done it. I'd say it was well delivered um, and obviously they keep on throwing the gags in about Sabine making people sick, but yeah, I'd say the extra gear is where it's at for us car enthusiasts. I would happily watch extra gear week in, week out, every time it came on for the next, I believe it's six weeks until the end of the series. But I'm not entirely sure I would regularly watch Top Gear. Now I am going to check in here and there and see if it's improved and obviously deliver my opinion back to you guys because it seems it's something you want to watch. But yeah, I just, I feel that extra gear is definitely where it's at for me. Um, I would happily watch that. But to round it all up, I think what they should have done is not done extra gear. I reckon they should have had Chris Harris, Rory, I don't know his second name. I didn't even catch his name until 15 minutes into it. So Chris Harris, Rory, Matt LeBlanc and Sabine Schmidt. And I reckon that would have been a perfect cast. Four people doing their own thing and occasionally communicating with each other. And I reckon Chris Evans was just not needed. 
Um, there's been a lot of speculation in the comments of my Top Gear review that um, he's been friendly with people in the BBC to try and get this kind of promotion. I'm not going to quote the exact words. Yes, I am actually. Licking arse was the words I believe one of the comments said. Um, but yeah, I I feel that Chris Evans wasn't needed. He just, he just wasn't. I don't know why they bothered. Um, and everyone wants Chris Evans gone, really. That's, that seems to be the general consensus. Of, and just make a cast of four, ditch the extra gear, and make a good top gear because they haven't done that yet with this new cast. I know they've only done one series and it's very early in, but they have been filming for quite a while now. Um, and they've all been on TV before and they know how to present and everything like that. Apart from Chris Evans, he doesn't seem to know what he's doing. He just seems to be... I don't know, I just... Ugh. Yeah, anyway, I'm gonna wrap up this here because the camera's about to cut off again because it's on a 12 and a half minute timer. So I'm gonna sign off now get this edited, throw it up, and I may have another review for you tonight. So I've got a lot of editing to do. I also have a wall to paint, <laughs> and maybe a video game. We'll see, we'll see. Um, I will be back next week to do a review of episode two to see what's changed and see if this crazy smooth delivery and thorough delivery of information is maintained or if it's, they've kind of given it all they've got and it's kind of faded away because I'm dreading that that is going to be reality of it. Um, but yeah, time will tell, so bye. <laughs>